First of all, thank you very much for your introduction. It was very sophisticated. We never had such an introduction, so somehow I feel obliged to, to do my best to show you uh, uh, our present, our current concerns in architecture. This is uh, the first time we are speaking on, on, on this topic, uh, trying to uh, <coughs> speculate uh, on a theme of updating, upgrading. So in speculating between the upgraded standards and uh, possible invented patterns uh, between the natural and artificial, between the planned and the generated. Uh, it is likely to be seen that the city of the early 21st century is a possible combination of both. Uh, combinations of analog and digital is, according to our opinion, uh, shall mark its architecture. Uh, consecutive updating of different uh, uh, levels of, of, of uh, reality or architecture, if you will, uh, of, of an analogous architecture, uh, it could be presented as a set of uh, operations and this uh, lecture tries to address to them. Uh, in the second part, we shall try to show how updating uh, relates to different scales and programs to phenomena like instability, lightness, context or time, and to issues like infrastructure and nature. In the third part, we shall try to uh, show how such an iterative, uh, multifaceted optimizing process can be uh, applied to a single project. Uh, we will take the example of our scheme that we are proposing for the Glasgow site. So uh, it is uh, the projects uh, that we are uh, uh, addressing to uh, might be always seen as a kind of a, a position of, of different uh, uh, targets, of different uh, uh, ways of looking at them, uh, be it uh, uh, surrounding which is being dreamt or which is being real, uh, or if we are dealing with the nature, the nature which is uh, 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 real or hyper-real or the nature which is being transformed into the new reality, or the nature which uh, uh, tends to be uh, uh, shaped architecturally, more or less uh, rigid, or nature which is artificially redone, reshuffled into the new entity, like we did in the project for Den Bos site in, in Holland. Uh, the issues of, of uh, uh, town planning are very important for our work. So uh, trying to see how uh, ad hoc structures function, what are the relations between the elements, or how to, to uh, address the already planned uh, uh, seedlings or settlements uh, on the right side is one of the best examples that we have in Zagreb, an estate from the 20s. <coughs> or uh, trying to uh, transform or, 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 or just trying to define a transition between the, the inherited and the new, 
This is the uh, checkered field, which is uh, a symbol of, of uh, our Croatian state. And on the right-hand side is a proposal for a new Croatian flag, uh, which uh, came second in competition. Uh, the more uh, convenient or more conventional uh, solutions being accepted. Uh, furthermore, uh, we would like to uh, s see uh, uh, the phenomena in, 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 in space like the things you can predict and the things you don't. For example, like in the, in the painting of clay, which is called Überschach, which should mean that we should apply some more rules than you can have in a normal game of chess. Or uh, addressing to those crystal diagrams of uh, economical uh, 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 disposition of different uh, data and elements. Then we come to the issues of time. We think that time is a very important uh, uh, ingredient of town planning and we are referring to, to such uh, an issue very often. So uh, it is very uh, hard to, to, to fix uh, a moment. So we are rather uh, ready or, or, or willing to talk about architecture as a process, as a sequence of different landscapes that evolve and disappear in time. Time can be, see, be seen on architecture. Uh, uh, the scars and the wounds uh, are those that testify about the existence and duration of time. Uh, on the level of urban planning, uh, updating might be applied on a very modest, low key scale, if you will like we uh, would like to show in this example uh, for, uh, for the urban planning in a little town in, on the Adriatic uh, coast called Vyškovo, where we were asked to do a very modest uh, improvement into very uh, demanding uh, undulating landscape. And we were actually asked to, to do a set of rules how to inhabit those areas, those uh, uh, undulating circular areas which are still not being uh, under the houses. How to define a set of, of very simple, very uh, straightforward rules uh, in order to, to prevent the further violation uh, of nature. One of the rules that we, we established was reading of what, what it was in the past, li uh, working downstairs, living upstairs, now the situation is reversed because the slope goes like this. So we just reversed this idea of work access from the street and uh, disposition of living towards inner side of, of this circular zone. Secondly, a set of rules, how to inhabit the zones, what are the possible uh, uh, relations between the open space between the closed space, between the one that is a private zone and the one that addresses to the street, with the notion how this typology might look like. And secondly, a basic type of working and living and mutations of the basic type towards more uh, real and uh, applicable uh, solutions. The other example we are showing is uh, large scale planning a competition we did in the town of Maribor in Slovenia. It was a competition for a uh, site it's here. It has about 75 hectares. It is like it looks in the original state. And it is a derelict zone, uh, the zone we might uh, also see as, as a terrain vague, as a zone which is very uh, um, uh, very rich in, 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 in different elements, in different uh, uh, topographical, programmatical and other uh, uh, ingredients which uh, uh, now, nowadays uh, uh, form the site and which had to be addressed in a very uh, efficient manner. So what we tried it was uh, first of all to decipher what is the, the vegetation, what is the, the what is the horticulture, what is the landscape that exists on the site in order to use it as a kind of a low budget landscaping, uh, uh, kind of a tactic where the, uh, um, uh, often to be seen our projects. Secondly, we tried to uh, set a very uh, uh, simple 
set of rules how to progress, how to move along the site as a linear progression, as a sports band, and more or less iterative along those undulating fields. Then we, s we put some elements like this, trying to establish a grid in a hub which we are, p we, we are uh, able to address to a single lane, trying to develop each of them in a sequence of time as a process. On this slide you can see the setup of different programs where we tried not to be uh, monofunctional as much as we could. A few images of the model, uh, possible architectural in interpretation and, and uh, relation to the landscape. Uh, relating to the questions of program, we uh, think that updating, for example, on, on this example uh, uh, concerning the housing issues, uh, we believe that updating might be uh, uh, quite efficient in a way. Uh, on, we were asked by a magazine Quadens to do a speculation what are the elements who are, that are relevant for housing today, and we uh, where we, we established a set of possible upgrading. We said it is possible to upgrade different elements like plan which was once paralyzed, then free and then neutral according to some projects we did in, in this uh, area. <coughs> Section can be also modified towards some more protective uh, means, uh, be it from outside or restructured from inside accumulation of the elements and uh, how it functions as a time-related uh, 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 town planning which we called fuzzy logic grid as a notion of uh, adaptable structure. Uh, we think that uh, the self-organizing uh, uh, processes, adaptable structures, autocatalytic sets are the devices uh, uh, drawn from the, the science of complexity which are possible keys how to uh, tackle the theme of urban planning today. On the, on the right hand side you see <coughs> the sixth point which is not from this updating series but which addresses to this digital level uh, which uh, functions uh, based on uh, advanced telecommunication and this is a speculation how such a flat uh, might look like with quite differently portioned zones for body, soul and refuse. These are those elements once more a bit more clearly visible. A few uh, hints uh, what updating might mean in the level, on the level of housing, a project we did for the town of Schwerin in Germany. One of the issues of project was how to inhabit this uh, lake shore and then we established a kind of a logic which already partially exists, uh, the logic of von boat, uh, so to say the dwelling boats you, that, that are newly designed by us and that are in the water in summer and on the shore in winter. We use the help of the existing cranes in order to move them and to, pro to, to form a kind of a protective shield for the winter months and to have some, some areas which might be inhabited and used in those uh, more severe uh, cold conditions. This is an example from for, uh, from a workshop we did in Merano in Italy two years ago. Uh, the brief was how to congest, how to compress as much as possible the existing uh, settlement, how to add new programs but not to uh, use too much land which is very uh, uh, expensive and uh, ex extensively used for, for cultivation of apples and such. Uh, things. So we uh, came up with uh, the idea of, of such very compacted clusters or mats if you like that contain all possible programs uh, in a hybrid uh, agglomeration which are as compact as possible to leave the fair amount of uh, land over for other purposes. Uh, 
by this we arrive to the second part where uh, we try to uh, highlight the elements of architecture which are important for us and which we, we try to relate to uh, those six memos from Italo Cal Calvino. As you know, uh, there is a book which is written uh, according to these six issues of, of uh, literature uh, as a kind of uh, set of notions for the, set for the next uh, millennium and which are very applicable and, and useful also in, in the field of architecture. So if we start, start by lightness as a phenomenon which might be very well applied to architecture as, as, as an issue of temporality, as an issue of trying to uh, not uh, to be too uh, architectural, but quite relaxed and simple. Uh, we are trying to uh, describe it with a project we did for a competition for urban sign of, of uh, 9, 900 years of the city of Zagreb. So what we did actually was recreation of of, of city gate as two simple uh, white laser beams coming out of the simple humble hillock as a kind of undulating uh, green slope. But in the same time trying to be uh, a bit more ambitious about inner elaboration of this little uh, 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 little uh, feature of this little uh, uh, change of the landscape. So it might be just a, a, a simple green mound with lasers inside. It might contain some programs. It might be made of different ma materials like core 10 steel or out of water as a kind of a virtual slope. <coughs> And these programs might uh, have a, quite a specific role in an urban scenario concerning the immediate context of the city. Uh, this is how this point might relate to this intelligent slope, as we called it. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and this is one of the uh, uh, adjustment of the model in the, lab, in the laboratory. Uh, the second feature I'm going to speak is quickness. Uh, in this project uh, it means taming the infrastructure. This is a project for a new fair complex in, in Maribor, also a part of, of the uh, urban scheme I've already shown you. Uh, this is a feasibility study we did after the competition, trying to show how this a triangular area between those infrastructural uh, uh, trajectories might be used to accommodate new programs. We thought of a fair as a structure which has no facades, no elevations, as simply poured down between those triangular uh, 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 lines. Uh, we used also cranes which are part of uh, uh, program for the new fair in order to tr transform and to, to, to deliver goods as a part of a more ambitious scenario where those elements might uh, take part in some other events like rock concerts, like sport events, etc. Uh, the whole area is divided into, into three parts, the first phase the open part of the first phase, the service belt, and the second phase here. One of the important features is this pier here, which services the site in a manner of the airports, because the, the, the length of the site is uh, 500 meters, so we had to apply some more effective uh, uh, ways of transportation. This is how it is possible to use this zone within the houses or in the circular ring for different expositions and different programs and things which are connected and related with the, the fair. We are also trying to, to use this uh, open zone as a kind of a intelligent platform which might be then uh, 
colonized with light structures. This is a, an image which refers to the examples we already very well known from, from architectural uh, heritage, which is very dear to us and which we found extremely um, effective, uh, especially in such cases, dealing with such huge uh, uh, operations which should be undertaken. And this is an image from Barcelona giving an example how this pier as a connecting, as a main connecting element might look like. And these are the flows. This is one of the most important things for us in the project to organize, to orchestrate the flows, be it pedestrian flow, bicycle, cars, uh, cranes, uh, monorail, and all sorts of different uh, things and, and speeds which, which uh, uh, across the site. Uh, a fair complex as a frame for events. This is the third point uh, related to Calvino, means exactitude. Organization of territory in the house. How to be uh, very precise and very uh, uh, strict and very uh, clear about how to use the site. It was a competition for a new uh, uh, biopharmaceutical faculty in Zagreb. And uh, this was the site. It was strictly uh, aligned to this site. But we said, OK, we cannot do it like this because it's a botanical garden which belongs to them too. So we put the house as a kind of a connection bet between all those three entities, making the fourth one within the house. We are trying to see the house as a, kind, as a part of a landscape, as a kind of a folded or unfolded landscape. It is uh, maybe not quite possible to say whether the house falls out into the landscape or is the landscape compressed into the house. So there is a ring along the house which is inhabited with different sorts of plants according to the uh, or, or orientation on the site. And this is what we actually did, trying again to tackle the ideas of, of artificial nature within a rigid frame and uh, trying to define this middle zone as a zone of different act activities related to the students and trying to be as effective and as rigid as possible within the envelope. This is how it might look like. There is an, it's an image from Botanical Garden in Graz done by architect Volker Ginke, a very good example of, of how architecture and landscape might merge into the into one entity. Again, different <coughs> trajectories, different movements within the house, different routes through the house, daily routine for the students, or homeopathical route, as we, saw, as we call it, uh, through this uh, veg vegetal uh, environment. Visibility as a kind of uh, relation of elements towards uh, the surrounding. Our Yokohama entry relates directly to this painting by Mondrian, Pier and the, Pier and the Ocean, uh, where he tries to say it is not very likely to say where the pier stops and where the water begins. That's what we actually did. We uh, formed the roof and the sides of the building as a water uh, aquaria. So the whole building is under the water, so it is not possible to tell exactly where one starts and the other begins. This is the basic diagram which shows this in that tension. And the water, so to say, leaks from the roof, forming different uh, activities, attractions, which we called wet voids. So this is a set setup of different activities, undulating planes within the house, and this is one of the possible interpretation of this idea of penetrating this very aquatic uh, uh, landscape within the house. Another feature from this Maribor project, uh, uh, linked to 
the, the link to the, the second feature, the next feature, which we called consistency. It's a shopping center on this, the edge of the site. And we try, this is the, this is the uh, stage of the competition, and we try to address it uh, in a new way as the program has changed with uh, uh, coming of, 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 of the real investor. Uh, we try to see it in the light of uh, some somewhat changed typology. This is how we see this American perimeter centers or, or hypermarkets as they do it, and this is how we are trying to transpose it as a uh, European type of such a center, trying to celebrate traffic within these rigid forms and trying to pour all the programs within those very strict limits. This is a sketch of the site with those cuts for traffic and some other elements like billboards which should anchor the house to the site. The house is big and it, is, it threatens that it, sh it should be break down. This, this, these are the already known uh, questions and ideas of, uh, of bigness, of having a huge form which somehow lacks a kind of it integrity. We do not agree that it's not possible to ma maintain a kind of integrity within such structures that are in this case 250 to 170 meters long. So that's why we applied some other criteria to uh, trying to 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 to, put a, to, to, to have the house to uh, keep the house together. One of them is this undulating landscape on the roof, where we are not trying to recreate the ground that we lost, but we are trying to be a bit more severe, uh, 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 organizing green and tar strips on this undulating plain which might be partially uh, uh, publicly accessible and with those, as I said, with those uh, billboards as kind of anchoring elements uh, trying to, to position the house on the site and with this kind of envelope which is very homogeneous which wraps the house as a whole and which is in the same time a kind of a, a co corporate identity for Baumax as, as a main investor, so this uh, yellow insulating uh, wool elements are with those uh, red strips uh, on this should somehow stress this idea of, of, of the colors which are uh, a characteristic element of the, of, of the, of the office of the, of the firm. So this is the first part uh, of the lecture and in the second part uh, I will try to uh, explain a bit more in detail what we mean under this uh, uh, sixth point which Colorina also addresses to. It means multiplicity as, as a kind of uh, sequence of elements which uh, are forming uh, an attitude towards the house and the, house and the built en environment. So uh, the Glasgow project is situated on the very outskirts of the city, on its south side. This is the site, sloping, and this is how we are trying to address to it. Uh, trying to do something in, on the plus surface, not forgetting the minus surface. And trying to, to, to tackle those ideas of geology and trying to be as modest as possible with the houses. This is the idea of a uh, contemporary city, somewhat adjusted to the situation in Glasgow, where we can see the city core. When we have seen this 19th century uh, 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 parts which are related to the city core in a very specific manner, and here we see this circular <coughs> outer ring city limits and the zones we, we call the zones of complementary centralities. These are the zones which we uh, uh, found, find very important, and very stimulating, very interesting. Uh, we are not sh sure if we, we should call them uh, urban sprawl. We are a bit more uh, ambitious about their setup. So again, about the grain, uh, it's not the American dream. It shouldn't be also not the 
those already known terrace houses pattern, but we are trying to do it a, a somewhat uh, different. First of all, we tried to find those, uh, to, to, to read, to decipher the corridors which already exist on the site. The infrastructural one with the, the rail and the ecological one as a possibility of doing a green belt on the north part of the site. And those elements which are somehow floating like islands in this surrounding not forgetting the areas in between those islands. So, as a second thing, we are trying not to have them monofunctional as those, but more hybrid, more complex as this one or ours. These are the elements which are somehow contributing into this suburban uh, stew, if you will. Uh, this is a second, this is in the next relation uh, which has to do with fragmentalization of the territory or ownership of the territory, Scottish clans, families, ownership from the past transposed into the new reading of suburbia as different elements but related to each other. Then we can talk also about Parker and Unwin, which uh, we think fit quite good into this idea of modest upgrading, not trying to be quite inventive, but trying just to go a bit further, where they define how should the streets look like and surrounding areas, where they also define how uh, open urban public should, like, should, should look like, whether it's just a park or a sport facility. And then he addresses to some other things which are related to this disclaimer we got for the competition. May I read just this? The council will not accept any responsibility for loss, injury or death on the site while conducting these activities. So we took this sentence quite seriously uh, while, while doing our competition scheme, which, seems to, which, which is proven to be right while visiting the site. So uh, this is what uh, Unwin uh, somehow uh, prescribes as a kind of protectiveness of the city. Uh, and if you go bit further then you can see those different levels which he relates to and that, that we transpose into these three different worlds which exist on those three levels. This is a very speculative feature. We are now trying to uh, 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 find out whether it's true or not, showing young Alison Smithson typing in, in Dubrovnik while being a part of a CAAM Congress in the 50s. On the right-hand side, you see some surrounding areas of Dubrovnik in Croatia with some buildings which we uh, would like to call mats. So flat, uh, self-consistent, protective, hybrid structures uh, thrown in the landscape and related to each other in a very particular way. Uh, our uh, speculation is whether they have seen this or not while uh, 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 formulating their ideas about mat buildings. This is just to show you a bit more how it functions. So very strict rigid frames, house on, on, the, on, on, on the edge. You can think of upper and lone house as, as, as a possible relation to this and a very rigid uh, uh, organization of the landscape within these limits as a kind of a hortus conclusus. Hybrid features, it was also a church as a part of a complex which was also accessible for uh, the peasants. So this is one of the early models of, of this Glasgow proposition we made. Uh, also trying to be protective, also trying to be uh, 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 doing this multiplication of the units as might be seen by different uh, monasteries, for example like Emma which was very dear to Le Corbusier things. Uh, issues of, of protectiveness seen as a kind of a Vierkanthof, so uh, a, a kind of a, a land estate with four sides in Upper Austria, or as it would be done by a child. Then we are, tr are trying to address to this social issue, uh, what, what, what should also be taken into consideration. Uh, it was not. It was. It was very important, and we, it was proven to be right. Also, talking to the residents, 
uh, that their beliefs and their expectations of, of this new planning should be somehow justified. And this is what the, look, the planning looks like today in UK, done by His Royal Highness. So we are trying to somehow to step a bit further from this model, even though it, it functions well uh, for, for a certain uh, level of citizens. So what we are actually trying to do is to decompose a middle-class neighborhood. We are trying to take the elements out of it and to reshuffle them and to make a new, much more compacted, compressed uh, entity. And it can be done, elaborated in, in, in different ways according to the final archi architectural formalization. Second important feature, to put as much as we can into the box, landscape, different typologies, parking, terrace houses, flats, atrium, houses and so on. Of course we could also, uh, we should also uh, um, try to answer the will of investors to be uh, within the certain cost limits. So th there is a very restricted budget in the last uh, couple of months or, or almost a year in this area or for, for the whole Glasgow. So we elaborated our plan as a possible uh, a sequence or as, as a speculation how could it work in, in as it was done by program as we are proposing like ideal standard or towards a critical mass which is uh, maximal density which we find appropriate for the site. Features of uh, different uh, relation between the fields, relations between the figure and the, and the, and the ground are very important things we, we are also trying to address too. So we are uh, not very willing to see the very st strong difference between the figure and the ground but more as relation between the different fields. So this is how we are trying to organize our general uh, layout, uh, trying not to be hierarchical about it, trying to uh, put uh, a certain capacity to every single plot of the land we are addressing to. Uh, of course, there are different other features. One might be a policy that we are trying to propose is not to take the demolition waste, the rubble, away from the site, but trying to rearrange it in a different ways. So it might be done as a kind of thing which has to do with tides, be it programmatic or physical or, or, or some other nature. It is still open. Of course, we had to refer to the very uh, geological conditions of the site and we interpreted them, those constraints, also as a kind of, 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 of landscaped area which somehow stresses the archaeology of the site uh, transformed into the new events which might happen. There is a set of different speculation how the site evolved in the past. So towards th this new reality which, which we are proposing. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. Um. So this is the possibility how to organize this demolition waste in the different uh, arrangements. This is how to do with the very geometry of the site. Uh, the logic of the drumlin as a kind of a geological feature with two focuses, uh, also trying to be bipolar in, in, in organization of the events. Different features of, of the layout or programs which are applied to it, or the use of, of the site over time uh, which somehow uh, illustrates our idea of uh, planning as a process which happens in time. So we are proposing to start with those birch rows as a kind of a f f forming the lanes where the settlements might come later on. Then doing this yellow brick road as a, as a elemental circulation pattern, proceeding with the lawns which might happen in between 
and then to terminate with different woods. This is also how it might work uh, according to the built structure. So the question of, of landscape and, and the green areas seems very important for us. As I already said, uh, we are, especially in this project, referring to the ideas of low budget landscaping, which uh, means that it should be maintained with quite simple means. Uh, done by Glasgow City Council. We are not very uh, uh, enthusiastic or, or expecting, expect, uh, uh, we are not expecting much uh, contribution from the residents themselves. We are just putting the possibilities. We are leaving uh, the, the, the territory over to them. So as Herman Herzberger, for example, would say, we are just preparing the set for a stage and the residents as, as, as performers on the set should do their own uh, act, whatever they feel appropriate. So this is what we were given on our first visit and we took it quite seriously also, trying to address to these ideas of uh, landscaping as uh, good as we could. So we were amazed by this wild header or by this wild beauty of the nature on the site. So we tried to proceed into this manner. And this is what we were also shown by the first visit, the Windy Hill House by Macintosh. But beside the house, this is what we liked even more. Those areas, those, those tiny differences between the moan and unmoan. So we said, this is the thing that interests us. This is what we could do also on, on, on our side. On the other hand side, the, the wildness of Scottish nature, Scottish landscaping, and a very important feature, which we, we, we have seen in the Pollock Park, wilderness within very rigid, almost French frames. So this was another uh, uh, thing that we tried to transpose in, as use in our setup. So the birch lanes should do as a kind of uh, urban uh, generator as a kind of, of, of a c a control how the development and uh, the clusters one by one might sit into it, forming in the same time uh, neighborhoods which have their own address and consistency. This is what I've already spoken about, uh, those differences between analog and digital, each of them uh, uh, having their own uh, uh, code with different expression of different elements uh, related to the site. Also relation to different uh, elements from art, land art if you will, which we are also uh, somewhat uh, sometimes referring to in our uh, work. This is an example by Christo. And then the landscape and the people. So we are very uh, uh, enthusiastic, uh, and they were also very enthusiastic, how this landscaping might work. So this is one of the first features they liked by our uh, first contact with them uh, on the site. And we think that this is one of the issues which might uh, be a driving force of the project. Uh, the image on the right-hand side uh, we named Tessanov 2000, trying to say that the environment that we are trying to propose is a kind of, uh, of, of the way he has seen his work. Just a little shift further on as an organization of, of the built and inhabited territory with the help of natural elements. And those natural elements which are somehow always not always easy to say whether where one stops and when the other begins if they are of the same origin. So we believe that this site with those elevated planes and the, and, and the paths which have the, the, the right protectiveness which we, seems, which we think is very important for, for uh, the setup will uh, uh, go to, will we'll find uh, certain uh, appropriation. And we think that different uh, organization of the, of the plot, like Coderre did with a simple village in Catalonia, 
might uh, uh, somehow respond to the wishes of the residents. And uh, it is also interesting to see that such features and typologies also might be seen in Croatia on the coast. I would like to conclude by saying uh, that uh, beside the idea of upgrading and updating, inventing new or, or, or trying to stay somewhere in between, there are landscapes, there are uh, 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 things that still remain as they, as they are, uh, that should be somehow preserved as they always were. A house remains a house, nature remains nature. Thank you very much. can pick up your last comment where you said that there were things which needed to be conserved and things which um, might need to change or might, where change might be beneficial. Um, and you are talking about um, updating uh, the fabric or the environment. And how do you decide um, by how much something has to be updated. In other, in other words, what date? Yeah. Um, so you might. Some people might say you have uh, a place, and you might update it by 20 years. You might update it by 30 years. You might update it to the present, or you might actually um, imagine a, a future which is what 20 years ahead. So, um, how do you imagine the connection between updating and time? I think that is, uh, uh, that is a very good question that somehow uh, is not always us as architects that, should, uh, that are in position to, to decide about it. So I would uh, refer to a saying again by, by Cedric Price who said do, for, to, to his client, do you really need a house? So sometimes I think that we should also ask ourselves, do, do you re really need an improvement? Do you, uh, do you really need architecture? So I think that there are places which deserve architecture and there are places which somehow should remain undeveloped. So uh, this is uh, seen from, uh, from, uh, from an angle of, uh, of an architect. But I think that uh, our role as, as servants, and we shouldn't be too uh, uh, much, uh, we shouldn't have too much illusions about our role in society. So I think that we should somehow try to uh, uh, reflect what the investor wants, what the society wants, what the planning uh, authorities want, and trying to find out of these uh, uh, data what should be done. So I think uh, appropriate answer should be somehow seen in every single case according to the every single plot that you are referring to, be it a house or, or, or a park or, or a bigger uh, part of a land. But I think it's not so easy to give a prescription or a recept or to say in advance this should be done like this or like that. I think simply that uh, those three possibilities, not to do anything, to do a little updating or to start a new, are still the options which will mark the next, next century.
uh, three of the projects uh, that two of the projects have shown are now in the phase uh, quite near to the construction and, now, and this is the project for hypermarket I've shown you and for this Glasgow site so in the Glasgow example uh, I try to show you what are the elements which we find important negotiating uh, the certain elements with the investor and trying to come nearer to, to, to uh, the people on the site and to all uh, authorities which uh, shall uh, make the final decision what shall be built. So I think it's a very uh, uh, hard process of negotiation from an idea towards the built reality and I think it's definitely uh, uh, the, 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 the final product is the one that shows whether you have succeeded or not. So I would uh, agree with your, uh, 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 your uh, question that such a process needs its justification in a built form. We are uh, completely of the opinion that an architect's architect which that doesn't succeed to transpose it into the built reality is not an, architect's, an architect that, that uh, has a, a, a quality with some, some examples where architecture is used as a means of transport, transporting some other ideas. And in this other project for uh, Baumax hi hypermarket in Maribor, uh, it has already been a very uh, exhausting uh, negotiating process. And I didn't want to, to make it too long uh, showing all the uh, stages of this negotiating, of this uh, stepping back from the original concept, which somehow in some instances even made our, our concept a bit stronger or more resistant, if you will. So I think uh, the role of the architect uh, after a school is uh, this second phase of, of maturity in, in uh, direct contact, in full contact, if you will, with, with investors and, and reality is a very important uh, uh, period, whether you do it in, on, your, on your own or in some other's offices. I think it's for, for a young architect, it's very important to, to have this period of, of getting mature in a couple of years. Uh, I think that uh, this uh, issue which you addressed to uh, of temporality of, of trying to, to uh, uh, make some flexible arrangements to not to make architecture of stone but, by, but more uh, lightweight is the idea that we have of architecture. I think that we are certainly thinking that uh, houses that are be being built today shouldn't be made for, for, for Ever, I think that today we have to do with some some other uh, issues which are more of a temporary uh, nature. So, uh, landscape has this code of transformation already in itself. So, I think the house should also uh, more or less uh, uh, let this transformation process uh, happen. So, uh, for example, in this Glasgow uh, site. We, wouldn't, uh, uh, it, uh, we think that it wouldn't matter if those clusters would be replaced in time with some more advanced structures. So it is a process which involves in time. It would be very nice, I think, if some of the ideas would remain within the new structure, be it landscape, be it one of part of the settlement. That, that's, uh, that's maybe not so important in the moment, but those different relations between what is already on the site and which is a part of the transformation might enter, might uh, bring some new uh, synthesis. So generally speaking, as I said in the introduction, uh, we are of the opinion that those fine synthesis of, 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 of traditional or analog, if you will, and those new advanced technologies will 
create the, these, these, these tensions. Uh, there was an article where Brian Eno was being interviewed when he said uh, he likes the computers but there is not enough Africa in them. So that's maybe illustrating the most what I'm trying to say that this idea of humanity within those uh, inhumane uh, digital limits should still mark the next century. Uh, well, especially uh, uh, concerning the, the, the building in states when, when, it, uh, when you have to deal with housing. So I think that the, the idea is quite clear and quite uh, 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 firmly based on, on economical uh, fundamentals, so to say. You build a house that lasts uh, as, as your family uh, exists, then it's, it is discarded and done as something new. So I think in, on, on the level of, of dwellings and housing uh, that such issues are are more uh, attractive and more uh, uh, actual than in some other areas. For example, if you're building a museum, then surely it, it, would, it would be expected to last a bit longer, of course, it, because in, in its code is this idea of containing, of preserving, of showing in the longer run. So I think that uh, the, this programmatic uh, issue of the project would somehow uh, uh, establish uh, expected duration of it. But I still think that, the, um, you know, if, you, if you're building these buildings in Glasgow, let's say, temporarily, then it's almost like saying that your idea is temporary or that it's not good enough to last the years. Or also that the psychology of a temporary house uh, can't sustain a family for a certain amount of time or that the family uh, won't stay together and live in the same house generation after generation. So, You, you know, uh, we, are not so, we are not so enthusiastic about this profession. You know, we don't think that we should be so... so uh, 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 so uh, uh, decisive about uh, our expectation from a house. I think that, uh, if you will, the role of architects in the society is so small and so uh, uh, tiny. Uh, if you if you take also the role of architect in the whole uh, uh, construction process, where a fair amount of other uh, consultants and other people take their own share of financial and, 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 and other uh, responsibility. So I think that in all those uh, uh, setup that we should somehow be happy to do anything at all. So I think that uh, this idea of, of trying to make something that lasts uh, should be somehow uh, left to somebody else to, to say his final word on it. So we should somehow try to to, to do our best, but maybe it's, it's a question of some, somebody else. Is, is there a kind of um, environmental problem, though, with that attitude? Because right? I really like the way you talk about the situations as you find them, and that's maybe what's there is really good, maybe only a bit of help, maybe it needs a lot of help. And I'm, I'm a bit surprised that when it comes to your own, say, housing, Well, but, yeah. but, if, if, but if that's your position, then you have to build in a slightly different way. I mean, I think housing kind of par excellence is a, a typology which, if you look around London, whether it's this was a house once or a more modest Victorian version, um, they're, they're physical artifacts which have taken enormous change just by putting an addition, by adding some plumbing, by reducing the number of inhabitants from 20 to 2 to 4 uh, to 3 couples, you know, and, and maybe you're being too pessimistic. And, and, and also, I think environmentally, it's problematic to think of buildings disposably. I mean, never mind the sort of psychological implications of kind of the North American example. And I think you've been very clear about the difference of your practice to a North American practice. But can we afford to make buildings that are like 
suit or our shirt because, because of the energy that's embodied in, a bil in even the most modest, self-effacing building. I totally agree with you. I, I'm glad that you put it like this. I mean, we are trying to uh, see our work uh, to, to its final extent. What is the, the worst possible scenario which might happen? So we're going out of this. So maybe it's, it's the other way of approaching architecture. Maybe it would be better to, to be a bit more optimistic about it. Maybe it has to do something with our cultural background. I don't know. But uh, uh, I'm glad that you said it, and I completely agree that uh, updating or upgrading also relates to do a little improvements within the structure. I think it's, it's uh, perfectly possible. Uh, I'm only uh, trying to uh, maybe to outline once more what we have seen and what we were uh, uh, totally uh, impressed by in Glasgow. They are simply tearing the whole blocks down to show this lower classes, look how we care for you. So, so it's a kind of a political game where we as architects have almost no, uh, 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 no possibility of, of saying that, look, this house might have lived a bit longer. So these are the processes that we uh, uh, be it urban planning or architecture might somehow go with and try to, 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 to navigate with them, if you will. <coughs> okay. Talking about how long things last, it's been a long day. And so everyone on here, and we, we will begin to eat. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.